next slide yeah so here is the triple uh, let's talk about the triple stranded dna now some some as we know that uh, triple stranded dna is most of the time in the previous situations that people start to know that it is not possible or even in at the beginning of the uh, of this discovery of the dna structure linus pauling gave us a model of triplex of dna which was incorrect because he, he put those uh, nitrogenous bases at the outside or the external place ex external environment and put the phosphate at the internal environment which was wrong in as we know but now we know uh, that triplex stranded DNA can be formed or triple stranded DNA can be formed by putting those uh, bases on the in inside and the backbone on the outside but to make this kind of triple stranded bond what we need most importantly we need a separate or different types of interaction between those bases what we call uh, is a Hookstein base pairing. So what do we mean by a Hookstein base pairing? It is a slightly different base pairing than uh, the Watson Creek because in Watson Creek pairing we know that adenine will have adenine have to pair with thymine and guanine have to pair with cytosine. Uh, so this is the one and one bonding. So one pure purine with one pyrimidine this kind of bonding but in Hookstein pairing what we can say is that uh, three uh, nucleotide bases can pair bonds with each other that means uh, for example here we can have one purine uh, so example one adenine in this case and two thymine to make bond with that aden adenine this type of bond will be called a Hookstein pairing which is not denoted or differentiated uh, or discovered by uh, Watson and Crick so and, and it may also possible that we have one guanine and two cytosyl to make a bond which is also uh, a example of Hookstein pairing now uh, to, to make this kind of triple bonds or uh, the ability for this uh, purine residue to make a uh, bond with two pyrimidine residues uh, giving uh, us the uh, giving the new DNA the, uh, the, the degree of freedom to make this triple standard structures okay now if you go on here you can uh, look at the structure now you can see the nuclear bases uh, uh, so in this case uh, for example here we have uh, one adenine at the middle this is the adenine and two thymine here now they can form bonds because as we know this part and this part is a normal regions where you can find find bonds in case of uh, Watson Creek base pairing but this is the other regions of this the another hydrogen which is found in this NH portion and another uh, hydrogen that is provided by an th that thymine uh, can also pair with this in the in from 7 in 7 portion of purine of adenine to make another bond so this kind of bond formation helps to make a triplex structure stable okay now you can uh, see this same thing happen for the uh, for the bonding with G and C now one important consideration about this that we have we are having this uh, simple duplex structure as you can see in this picture so at this structure as we know we have a major group we have a minor group so it's a helical arrangement and it, that that make this major and minor groups now uh, now if we add another strand which is the third strand uh, for this DNA where the strand is going to be interacted why the strand is going to interact with this other two the answer is this third strand is going to interact with the major groups of DNA so that's why what happens it will uh, engage with the engage to make bonds or hydrogen bonds from the major group side of the DNA so finally to make a compact structure of the DNA possible okay now the unique Hookstein hydrogen bonding patterns of guanine adenine provides a specific similar uh, similarity and specificity uh, similar like the Watson Creek so the specificity will remain the same so it will not hamper uh, the hamper the, uh, the specificity of a DNA it will not hamper the specific uh, the, the interactions of uh, dub double strands or, or the uh, or it will not hamper the structure of uh, or, or uh, what we can say the complementary nature of the DNA but still that kind of DNA can form now you can see how the triple strand is form uh, is trained to form inside the DNA this is a normal D DS DNA and SS DNA triplex as you can see but this type of DNA can also be formed due to the interaction of two DNA and we can see this kind of picture during the uh, the recovery of DNA repair as we know and also you can see in case of DNA recombination we can see this kind of triplex structures so this presence of this triplex structure is not uncommon as we know but the interaction will 
will be differing from this place. So in this picture, as you can see, this is the DSDNA and this is another DSDNA. Now one strand of this DSDNA will go and interacting with other two strands of the previous DSDNA to make a triple strand uh, at, at this particular region of the DNA. So we can find this kind of structures. So it may not possible that the, from the beginning of the DNA at the end of the DNA we have a triple uh, triplex of the DNA. That is not the case. That is not at all the case we can find. But we can find structures in between the DNA strand that there is made, uh, which are made up with the triplex strand of DNA. So we have a long stretch of DNA from uh, five prime to three prime uh, strand and the linear DNA arrangement in between them some of the sequences are involved to make this triplex stru structures okay so uh, this triplex structures are important in many cases as we know uh, so if we uh, think uh, another type of Hookstein pairing as we can see here so which is called a reverse Hookstein pairing so let me tell what is the reverse, reverse Hookstein as we know the Hookstein if we uh, consider uh, from suppose uh, we have a strand here for 5 prime to 3 prime we have another 3 prime to 5 prime which is uh, which is uh, the anti parallel in orientation finally make a bonds like this which is a simple Hookstein pairing now if we invert this uh, this structure of this basis if we invert the basis out and finally make the though we can invert the this basis it still can make bond with each other and those kind of bonds will be called the inverse Hookstein base pairing or inverse Hookstein base as we can know which will be TAT so again in this uh, like this we can have now uh, so here we can see as in double helical structures base stacking plays a key role in stabilization of this triplex structure so base stacking is also very important during the triplex structure but another important thing is the hydrogen bonding and uh, hydrogen bonding is really important for in these cases the bringing of this three triple helixes this is a very important assumption so uh, hear it very properly that bringing this three triple helixes as we are bringing three helices uh, so three backbone which are phosphate three phosphate backbones which are all negatively charged so due to uh, binding the three triplex helices together uh, which are all negatively charged backbone uh, strand together which increases the electrostatic repulsion and as a result of this electrostatic repulsion the DNA structure are not very much stable so the three triple helices is less stable than the associated Watson Creek double helix okay the presence of mag uh, magnesium ions or other uh, multivalent cation stabilizes the triple helix structure of the DNA die uh, that's why so as we know if we pr place all these uh, three uh, strands together which are all negative which are, uh, there is a scope of repulsion but this kind of repulsion can be minimized if we add some bivalent ions in inside that like magnesium like calcium so if we add this magnesium or calcium ions inside so if if inside a cell if we increase uh, the percentage of uh, magnesium and calcium ions then it, it has a tendency uh, to to just stabilize this this triple helix structure and uh, that that's what is going on all the time so remember in the starting point of all this replication uh, scheme or sometimes in, during the recombination scheme we can find the presence of this magnesium co uh, as a cofactor for different enzymes so we need magnesium in all those cases because the presence of magnesium is really really important in all the situations to stabilize the triple helical structure because uh, uh, we are, as we have seen before in the uh, in the previous picture that uh, this kind of triple helical structure can be formed uh, during uh, the during uh, the